Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about making bullets in Pico 8. This is a super nice system for just shooting bullets from your character. You can shoot as many as you want and it won't slow down your game. And yeah, it's pretty neat. And I'm gonna go slow for anybody who might be new to coding, new to Pico 8. This is how I make bullets. So I have my code running for my gun. And when I press X, it has a little shoot animation. If you wanna learn a little bit more how to do that, let me know in the comments. But I want this to shoot a bullet. Well, here's the general idea. Anytime that we hit the shoot button, what we need to do is create a new instance of a sprite. And we need to give that sprite speed and we need to tell it where to start. And then we need to tell it to animate every frame. And we could do this just with one sprite and reset its position and kind of animate it off, but then we could only shoot one sprite at a time. So really the best way to do this is the same way that you would do particles. It's creating a class for your bullets using a table and then animating every bullet separately automatically. Now, if that sounds like, oh boy, this sounds really complicated, it's not too complicated. And once you get used to using tables for classes, I do have a video on that, it's not too bad. So let's walk through this. I made a new tab here and I just labeled it bullets. And really what we need to do is we need to set up our bullet system at the beginning of the game. And then for every bullet that's in the game, we need to tell it how to operate, okay? So the first thing that we should do is set up our bullet system. So function, I bullets, two parentheses, end. So anything with setting up our bullets is gonna happen in this function. All of our bullets are gonna be in a table. So we're just gonna say bulls equals, and then two curly braces right here. That's all we need to do to set up our table for our bullets, okay? This is just kind of the group that all the bullets live in, okay? There's nothing going on, it just, there's a blank group. Next, we need to tell bullets what to do every frame. So I'm gonna make a function U bullets. Now, these aren't automatically gonna be called, we need to call these later, but we'll get to that. So right now is the most complicated part because we're gonna set up a for loop, which is one of those things in coding that feels really complicated and scary, but it's pretty simple, okay? What we wanna do is if we have a bullet in this group of bullets, we wanna take each bullet in here and animate it every frame. So we're gonna use a for loop and it starts like this, for B. Now this right here, this is just a variable. This can be anything. This could be hot dogs, doesn't matter. It's just whatever we've decided to call this variable that we're talking about right now, okay? Whatever a single bullet is called. And we can call it something different here than other places, it doesn't matter. But it's nice to just call it the first letter of whatever you're animating. So for B, for bullet. For B in all bulls. This is as complex as it gets. For B, so for every bullet in all of the bullets. So bulls is our group do something. We also want this end here. Whatever we want the bullet to do goes right there. So these are the calculations that we're going to do to each bullet. We're also going to have a similar thing for drawing the bullets. So function D bullets, that's just short for draw bullets. Again, not automatically going to happen. This is just so that we recognize it. And we're just going to copy and paste this right here. This for B and all bulls. And this is how to draw each bullet. So we kind of have this set up. So at the beginning of the game, we're gonna set up our blank group with no bullets in it. Every frame, if there's anything in the bullets group, this table of bullets, we're going to do something to each of those bullets, probably make it fly to the right. And also every frame after we do this stuff, we want to draw each bullet to the screen. So for each bullet, we're going to draw it to the screen somehow. Good. So before we forget, we're going to make sure that we call these. And so I'm gonna go back over to our main page here and I already have these typed in here. We just need to add I bullets at the end of each of these callbacks. So I bullets at the end of init, U bullets at the end of update and D bullets at the end of draw. So we're basically just making these functions separate and they're gonna do init stuff, update stuff and draw stuff. We're just breaking it out into these separate functions because it's easier to keep track of. So how do we add a bullet to this group of bullets? Well, we want that to happen when we hit the fire button, right? So we have this set up as when we hit button X, it animates the gun, okay? So let's do a similar thing. If button P X in update, then we're going to shoot, all right? So let's make a new function, shoot like this, just like that, shoot. Then we can go over to our bullets and let's make a function. Let's define the function, shoot. So when we hit the fire button, we want stuff to happen here. This is what happens when we fire. So what we need to do is add a bullet to that blank group so that we can update what the bullet does 
and animate it. So we basically need to create a bullet, right? So how do we do that? Well, with a table like this, we can add things to the table with the statement add, add, and then we need the table name, which is bulls, and then comma, whatever we want to add. So normally, you know, you could add something like five, you know, a, a number to a table, and it would just have a table full of numbers, right? But what we're going to do is add an object. We're basically adding another table. And so I'm going to make two curly brackets. This is just going to be kind of an unnamed table. And because I want to add a bunch of stuff to this, I'm just going to hit return a couple times. And now inside of this table, we're going to add properties of our bullet. So X, there's going to be an X position. So let's just say X equals zero and then comma Y equals zero comma SPD for speed equals one. And let's just call that good. So I'm just breaking this out. We can actually write this like this too. And that would work fine. In fact, we could just leave it like that. It doesn't matter. I like to have these on different lines because it's easier for me to just keep track of all the variables. I think it's a nice way to do it. And so all we're doing when we shoot is we're just adding a bullet to this table of bullets. Then our other functions are going to take over and animate the bullet. So for instance, if we add a bullet here, why don't we draw that bullet? So we can say SPR and we have a bullet sprite here. This is sprite four. So let's SPR sprite four and we're going to draw that at zero, zero. Let's save and run. And when I hit shoot, it adds a bullet up there. Okay. When I hit, let's try it again. If I hit X, it adds a bullet up at the top. So it is adding a bullet to that table and it is drawing it, which is good, but it needs to add it at a different place and it needs to animate it. So let's take care of animating it first. So instead of drawing this at zero, zero specifically, let's use these variables. Now, the way that we get a variable that's inside of this table, that's inside of our bullets table is with this little fancy variable here. B refers to whichever object we're talking about, whichever object we're looping through in this table bullets. So for the X value, I could say B dot X, which is the property X from whatever bullet we're talking about. Same thing, B dot Y like this. And so now, right now, X and Y are zero, zero. So this is gonna do the same thing. But if we set X and Y to, you know, if we set Y to 40 and X to 40, save, run, it's going to appear at 40, 40. So that's working. So now we want the bullet to fly to the right. So every frame, let's go ahead and use this same B dot X and just add something to it. So let's say B dot X plus equals, so that's going to add one to this every frame. This is the same thing as saying B dot X equals B dot X plus one. Okay, save, run. Now, if I hit X, there goes the bullet just like that. And I can make new bullets too, because every time I hit X, it's going to add another bullet to that table. Great. So we have it sort of working actually, that's pretty cool. How do we get it to appear at the right place? Well, as we play the game, our gun follows our mouse on the Y axis. And so that's a variable that's being updated all the time. What we can actually do is take that variable and we can send it to our function using an argument. So the variable here is G position Y. And so when we call shoot, let's just go ahead and give it G position Y right here. We can put anything we want in these parentheses. We can give it any kind of information we want here, as long as we tell it what to do with it when we define the function on this next tab. So shoot G position Y. Okay, so we're giving it the Y position of the gun. So I'll go over here. And so in this function, shoot, we're going to get G position Y as our first number. So we could call this G position Y if we want to, but we don't have to. We can call it whatever. We could just call it Y position. We could just call it GY. Let's just call it GY for gun Y position. Now, when we make this bullet, let's make this bullet exactly where the gun is. So let's just say GY. So when we shoot, it's going to take the Y position of our mouse and it's going to send it over here to this function. And it's going to assign it right here as a new variable called GY. Then we're gonna take that variable and put it in our Y for our bullets. So if I hit save and run and I hit X, it's going to appear at the exact place up and down as our gun. Pretty cool. Let's see, we don't want this X to be 40. We want this to be like eight probably because it's just gonna be at the end of our gun. So, ooh, now we got, look at this. It's happening. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And this is essentially, I mean, we're, we're pretty much done. We just have to tweak some stuff here. So these bullets are way too slow. So let's go ahead and make these bullets go a little bit faster. So we could just adjust the speed here with this number, the number that we're adding to the X position. We could also make this a variable inside of our bullet, like SPD, like this. So we could say like two, and then we could just say plus B dot SPD, save, run. And now it goes a little faster. That totally works. This needs to be a lot faster. How about like four, save, run, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, there we go. 
Now we're shooting a bunch of bullets. Pretty cool. But we're adding these bullets to the table each time. And every time I add a bullet, guess what? Even though we can't see it, those bullets are still on the table because we're not getting rid of them in any way. So eventually this is gonna slow down the game. So if we have a long game where we're doing lots of shooting, pretty soon it's gonna start getting slow, okay? It'll probably take a while, but it'll happen. So what we wanna do is delete a bullet when it goes off screen. So that's a good thing to do in the U bullets thing because it's going to think about the position of every bullet. And all we need to do is put a little if statement in this for loop. So after this, after we update the speed and everything, let's just say if b.x, that's the X position of our bullet, is greater than the edge of our screen, which is like 128, then let's put the end there, we are going to delete the bullet. How do we delete the bullet? Well, we say del for delete, and then we have to tell it what table to delete from, that's bulls, and then comma what we want to delete, which is B. Then I'll close that. So if B.X is greater than 128 for this specific bullet, it's looping through and it's going to do this for every bullet. If there are 20 bullets on screen, it's going to do this 20 times. And if it finds a bullet that's off screen, it's going to delete that bullet. So it's going to take care of stuff for us. Save, run. And now those bullets that are off screen, those are gone. So we could do this forever and we're going to have similar performance. It's going to be pretty much exactly like this the whole time. So that's a good thing. So yeah, that's basically how you do bullets. It's a little bit of uh, some advanced stuff with tables and classes and that kind of thing. But look at this. this, this isn't that bad. It's not that bad. We make a table for our bullets and every frame we loop through each bullet and we tell that bullet how to act, whether it's to fly right or up or spin in circles, whatever we wanna do. And then we loop through each bullet and we draw it wherever it's supposed to be. When we hit the shoot button, all we're doing is adding another bullet to our table. And we're just making sure that we call this I bullets under init, update, and draw. And whenever we hit the fire button that we call that shoot function, we're giving it the Y position of the mouse and we're using that Y position to position where our bullet, pretty cool. Hey, if you wanna check out this Pico 8 project, I'm gonna have a link to it in the description. You can download it for free. You can enjoy this and uh, use it on your projects if you want to. Hey, if you watched this far, go ahead and give the video a like, give me a comment, let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for watching.